I'm Quinn Meisinger. Uh, I'm the program director for the Interventional Radiology Residencies at UC San Diego. I am going to be talking about some radiation risks and protection, some exciting stuff. Um, I have not taken the actual exam uh, because most radiologists are kind of grandfathered in, but I have kind of studied a lot about the exam for the fluoroscopy license, and I actually had to counsel a lot of our students on them, particularly the radiology residents. So um, this is going to come from not somebody that's taken the exam, but somebody who's taught a lot for the exam specifically. So um, obviously the reason that people need, are worried about a fluoroscopy license and the reason that you need it is because there is obviously damage that can be done by radiation. So, you know, this is just a report there, but most people know starting in about the, really since the advent of fluoroscopy, knew that probably that the radiation was damaging. Nobody really knew how or why or how much or what the threshold dose is. So we'll kind of touch upon that, but basically just know that there is literature out there and that when people ask about it, you know, um, this was kind of one of the bigger papers when it showed that uh, a lot of interventional cardiologists were getting uh, brain tumors on the left side of their brain that was closer to the radiation source as opposed to people in, outside of uh, the other cardiologists that don't receive radiation. Just another procedure here too. Paper here too showing that uh, you know head and neck tumors are uh, more common in interventional proceduralists. Um, the there was a paper in AJR that said, hey, we have a ton of radiology technologists, looks like ninety thousand, um, and they collected a, a survey cohort and then they kind of followed them out in terms of figuring out whether or not they had any elevated risk of cancers. And uh, this actually did show that uh, both even the technologists. So as you can imagine usually the physicians are closer to the radiation source. So we're probably at any more elevated risk than the technologists are who tend to usually be circulating or being an assistant on the table for most of these procedures. So brain cancer, breast cancer, melanoma. The knowledge about fluoroscopy is actually remarkably low. So, uh, you know, in terms of the actual training, you'll see that here one's reporting about uh, surgery residents, specifically urologists find that uh, their training is insufficient. And then also in vascular surgery, the lack of formal radiation safety training is, uh, makes their training and safety efforts relatively inadequate um, across the country. So, you know, these are slightly older papers, but hopefully um, they're tailoring um, their residence institutes to get at least some exposure to uh, radiation training as you go. So just keep that in the back of your mind too. So sometimes you could be talking to somebody who does fluoroscopy procedures, but has actually had no uh, formal training in regards to the risks and how to make your fluoroscopy images better. This is the test. Um, starting in January 1st, 2013, the American Registry of Radiology Technologists actually started administering the fluoroscopy examinations, particularly to the California candidates. Um, so these are the breakdown of the categories. You'll see that the number of questions is 90. Um, the content category is broken down into kind of four things. One is uh, radiation, biology, and physics, um, and that's about 25%. Exposure to reduction, so that's we're trying to reduce the radiation exposure. Um, C is equipment operation, um, and then D is image evaluation, quality control, and patient consideration. So those four make up the tests. They all make up about 25%. So try not to ignore one part for the other. 